In this video, microcontroller AT89S52 will be programmed using assembly language. Assembly will be demonstrated through different examples. The AT89S52 microcontroller is part of the AT51 family. It has 8-bit registers used to store data temporarily. The A is the accumulator register which is used for arithmetic and logic operations. Registers R0 to R7 are general purpose registers. The microcontroller has 32 R registers, which are fully programmable by the user and are organized in four memory banks, 0, 1, 2, and 3. The default bank is 0. To access the other banks, we need to change the two bits RS1 and RS0 inside the program status word special function register. The remaining bits inside the program status register are called indicator flags, which are affected after any arithmetic or logic operations. These flags are carry, auxiliary carry, overflow, and parity. F0 and F1 are user-defined flags. The instruction set of the microcontroller is divided into four operations arithmetic, logic, data transfer, and branch. Let's have a look at some of the commonly used operation codes. For the arithmetic, we have add, increment, subtract with borrow, decrement, multiply, and division. For logic, we have and logic, or logic, exclusive or, compare logic, rotate left, rotate right, set bit, and clear bit. Data transfer operations which involve the move of data from source to destination include opcodes such as move and move x. Unconditional branch or unconditional jumps include absolute call, return, long call, absolute jump, short jump, long jump. Conditional branch or jumps which are normally invoked after an arithmetic or logic operation include jump on zero, jump on no zero, decrement and jump on no zero, compare and jump on not equal, jump on carry, jump on no carry, jump on bit, and jump on no bit. The hardware used to demonstrate assembly is shown here. We have the microcontroller interface with the Arduino using SPI connection. And the Arduino Uno is programmed as an ISP. We have a push button connected to port P0.0 and we have two LEDs connected to ports P10 and P11. Port 0 does not have any pull-up resistors, so the push button is connected in such a way so that it provides the pull-up resistor for port P0.0. All the ports of this microcontroller don't source current well, but they can sync current. So the LEDs are connected in such a way so that they sync current into the uh, P1 ports P1.0 and uh, P1.1. The second operation is simple. While the switch is not pressed, the red LED will be blinking. We press and hold the switch, the blue LED will start blinking. And now for a quick demonstration. Let's have a look at the assembly code. We start with the directive origin where we set the initial address at uh, hexy value 00. Then we execute this instruction jump on no bit where we are checking the status of the switch. If the switch is pressed then the value at uh, P00 would be logic 0 and this statement would be executed and the program would jump to this uh, label blue LED. Otherwise, if the switch is not pressed, then the value of the port would be at logic 1 and uh, this would be ignored. Assuming the switch is not pressed, this instruction would be ignored and the next instruction would be executed, which is set bit 
where a logic one will be sent to port 1.1 and this would uh, turn off the blue LED. Next we have instruction clear bit where a logic zero will be sent to port 1.0 and the red LED will turn on. Next the program calls a subroutine delay to introduce some time delay. Subroutine delay is achieved by running a three level nested loop. So the initial counter value for the first level loop is stored in register R0 using the move instruction. And for the second level, the initial counter value is stored in R1. And for the third level, the counter value is stored in R2. Next, the program will execute this instruction, which is uh, decrement and then jump on no zero, where the value of register R2 is decremented by one and then checked whether it's zero or not. If it's not zero, then it will go to this label, which is here. It means it will loop on itself until the value of R2 is zero and then the program will jump to the next instruction. In a similar way the contents of register R1 is decremented by 1 and checked for zero. If not then it will jump to this label and we have a loop. And the loop will only exit when R1 is zero. Then the next instruction is executed and the contents of R0 are decremented and uh, if non-zero then it will jump to label again one and we have a loop and this loop will continue until R0 is zero and then the program will see this instruction return where it will return to the call function actually to the next instruction after the call function. We can change the duration of the delay by changing the initial counter values stored in registers R0, R1 and R Back in the main routine, this instruction would turn off the red LED and subroutine delay will be called again and then small jump will jump to this label again which is here and the process is repeated while the button is not pressed and this would give us the effect of a blinking LED. When we press the switch, this instruction would be executed and the program would jump to this uh, label blue LED where the red LED will be off the blue LED will be on and then a delay and then the blue LED will be off and then a delay and then the status of the switch will be checked again to see if it's still pressed if so then the program will jump to this label blue LED and we have a loop while the switch is pressed and we have a blinking blue LED. When we release the switch then the program will go to the next instruction return where it will return to the instruction here and then we have the red LED blinking. Now the final step is to generate the hexacode from the assembly code and we do this by using the KL IDE shown here. So first we need to create a project. So we go to project, new project, and then we select the, uh, the folder where we want the project contained. So it's gonna be in my case here. We name the project, we give it a name, let's say red, blue, blink. Now here we define uh, the uh, the microcontroller we're using, and in our case it's the uh, AT 89 S 52. We select the controller. Now here it says copy this file. We don't need to copy this. This is only needed when we code in C language. So in assembly it's not required. So no. So now we have our target folder. We open it and inside the source group right click add new. So we're going to add in this case assembly file. Give it a name. Let's call it the same name as uh, red blue. Blink. Add. 
Next, we write our assembly code. And before we can assemble it, we need to do some tweaking to the project. So we go to project again, option for group, and we press OK. We go back to project, option for target. Now here we select the frequency of the controller, and in our case it's 11.0592 megahertz. And we also go to output and we make sure we check this uh, create hex file and then we go to debug and we select use and here we use the Kyle monitor driver and then we press OK now we are ready to assemble the program we press here the translate we make sure we have zero errors and zero warnings and we press build and then rebuild now the next step is to locate the hexi file we go to the project folder and then we go to folder objects and then we locate the hexi file if we open it we can see that it contains the hexi code the main advantage of using assembly over C is that less code is required and it is uh, much faster than C language and keep in mind that the microcontroller memory or flash memory is only 8 kilobytes. The next step is to determine the location of the hexi file within Windows. So right click, properties, make a copy of the location and then use this uh, CMD directive to load the uh, hexi file onto the microcontroller using the Arduino uh, ISP. But first you have to make sure that within the double quotation here you have the location of the file and the name of the hexi file. And then you press enter to execute. In conclusion, programming a microcontroller in assembly language generates hexi codes that are small and fast. The downside is complicated programming. Thank you for watching.